Next up in chapter 10 of the phase, we'll be talking about the unproven effects of essentially everything because if you remember earlier on when he was talking about his term, the phase, and what it encapsulates, it basically covers everything, like all the related practices, so lucid dreaming, OBE, and astral projection. So I'm just going to read um, word for word what he wrote, which is why I got my fancy reading glasses on here, and we'll give my dyslexic brain a good, a good test to see if I can read through this whole thing without messing up too much in one go, so let's find out. So he writes, People often approach the practice of various phase states with deep-rooted misconceptions about what can actually be achieved through practice. Everything listed in this section refers to these misconceptions. It has not been proven that any of these things are impossible. However, action should be based on proven and verified methods in order to avoid making mistakes and wasting time. Okay, so first up, he talks about physical exits. Physical exits, if the first experience with the phase phenomenon happens by accident, it is almost impossible to not interpret it as a real separation of the soul from the body, a physical exit. This is how the initial phase experience really feels. With the experience, it becomes easily noticeable that certain things in reality do not match things in the phase, like the placement of objects or furniture in the house where a phase is first encountered. No actual physical exit from the body has ever been proven through scientific ex uh, experimentation and observation. For example, in the phase, it is not possible to fly around to locations in the physical world, although it may seem so. The locations are experienced and produced within the mind, nor is it possible to pinch someone in the phase and then to find a bruise on the person while in reality. That makes me think of a Robert Monroe story there. Um, other worlds. The phase space is similar to the physical world and a practitioner may be inclined to think that the soul has left the physical body. Sometimes the phase takes on an absolutely unnatural form. As a result, the practitioner may decide that a parallel world has been entered. The world beyond the astral plane, mental space, or the ether. Although travel in the phase can lead to many places, this does not mean that the phase allows travel through or use of actual alternate worlds. The practitioner should be reasonable. And then the last one he covers is development of super abilities. It is partially correct to consider the practice of the phase as an extrasensory ability since it is an actual development of extremely unusual skills that have been considered mystical. Times have changed and the phase should hardly be shuttled off to the esoteric obscure corners of knowledge. There exists an unproven theory that the practice of the phase can impart unusual abilities. While literature is full of references to this effect, these abilities have not been proven by anyone. The same applies to intentionally developing unusual abilities in the phase. Yes, these may be trained while in the phase, but this does not mean that the training in the phase will yield the same results in the real world. Practice should not be for the sake of achieving super abilities since there are many proven applications that do not translate to reality in valuable ways. Be realistic. Hey, I didn't make too much mistakes in that one. So um, with that said, that'll wrap that up. Next up, we'll be talking about use of the phase by the disabled.